Hi, I'm Catherine, Program Coordinator for DCR's Division of Water Supply Protection. I'm excited to take you on a field trip today, a virtual field trip, and a tour of the watershed. What is a watershed? A watershed is an area of land where all of the water that is under it or drains off of it collects into one location, such as a stream, a river, lake, reservoir, or ocean. For this field trip, we'll explore the Wachusett Watershed, a sub-basin of the larger Nashua River Watershed, where water eventually drains to the Wachusett Reservoir. I'm here at the Wachusett Reservoir that holds 65 billion gallons of clean, unfiltered drinking water. Along with the larger Quabbin Reservoir, this drinking water supply provides high-quality, unfiltered water to the Massachusetts Water Resources Authority for over 3 million people. The reservoir is filled by the Quinnipoxit River, the Stillwater River, intermittently by the larger Quabbin Reservoir by Aqueduct, and by rain that falls and snow that melts in the watershed. As this water runs downhill, it collects. Some of the water soaks into the ground and some flows over land, but it all flows downhill. Small streams flow together into bigger streams, which flow into rivers. Eventually, the water in this watershed flows into the reservoir. This clean, clear water is considered very high quality. One of the few unfiltered water supplies in the country it doesn't need to go through an expensive filtering process. So how does this water stay so clean? Let's take a tour of the watershed and find out. Most of the lands surrounding the reservoir are protected. Much of it is covered in forests and wetlands. How the land is used can affect the quality of the water. Rainwater picks up pollution. Anything that's left on the ground can be carried away or dissolved into the water that flows into the reservoir. The protected, undeveloped watershed helps keep the water clean and clear. A watershed includes everything within its borders. All the land, air, mountains, cities, farms, plants, animals, and even people, their stories, and traditions. Our first stop is Stillwater Farm in Sterling. The house, fields, and forests are reminders of the past. During the mid-1800s, the rocky hillsides were used for pasture, while these fields below were used for crops. The forests, the fields, close to the Stillwater River provide a variety of habitats that support wildlife all year long. A healthy forest is important for good water quality. The trees, plants, roots, and soils of the forest act like a big sponge, soaking up water, slowing it down, trapping loose soil, litter, and chemicals. So there's less erosion, flooding, and pollution downstream. When the rain falls or snow melts in these woods, the water sheds downhill to the nearby Stillwater River and eventually makes its way to the Wachusett Reservoir. Next stop, across the street to the Stillwater River. At this location, you can hear some traffic and see impervious or hard surfaces, roads, driveways, and rooftops. This stormwater basin collects stormwater running off those hard surfaces and filters it before it reaches the river. The result is a cleaner river as it flows down to the reservoir. Next stop, the Quinnipoxit River and the Oakdale Power Plant. I'm here at the Quinnipoxit River. Water from the larger Quabbin Reservoir will enter this river by aqueduct. Water from the Quabbin Aqueduct sends water by gravity to the Wachusett Reservoir. Before entering the Quinnipoxit River, the water generates electricity at the Oakdale Power Plant. An aqueduct is a large pipe buried underground or a deep rock tunnel. The Quabbin Aqueduct is 13 feet in diameter and carries water from Quabbin Reservoir deep underground over 24 miles to the Oakdale Station. There are other aqueducts that take water from Wachusett to Boston. 
Next stop, the Old Stone Church, a historical landmark where the Quinnipoxit and Stillwater Rivers meet. Meeting at the Thomas Basin, the acts as a settling basin to help remove impurities before the water enters the reservoir. When the reservoir was created, anything that could possibly pollute the water supply was removed or relocated. This line of trees lined the old street when there were two churches, a rectory, and a schoolhouse. Only this church was allowed to stay because it was made of stone and wouldn't change the quality of the water. All the wood furniture, pews, and stained glass windows were removed. Our last stop is the dam in Clinton that holds back the water. At the time of construction, this dam was the largest in the world. The first stone was laid in 1901 and the last stone was laid in 1905. It's 115 feet tall above the ground and 1,423 feet long. The dam creates a ridgeline boundary for this watershed. Any rain falling on the other side of the dam flows to the Lancaster Mill Pond, which empties into the south branch of the Nashua River. The water on the other side generates electricity as it leaves the reservoir at the Cosgrove Intake and Hydroelectric Facility for drinking water for 51 communities. Are you in one of these communities? DCR manages and protects the source drinking water supply and the Massachusetts Water Resources Authority treats and distributes to these communities. Wherever you live, you are in a watershed. You can protect the surface water supplies and even underground wells if that's your source of drinking water by picking up litter, trash, pet waste, and anything that doesn't belong on the ground before it sheds downhill. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of Watch You Sit Watershed. I hope it's made you curious about your watershed address and how to protect it.